what is an Oracle and specifically Chainlink. So one of the biggest names in crypto that you may know is Chainlink, been in the top 25. So we're gonna talk about Chainlink's history, where it is now, and what's expected for it in the future. I'm going to explain where I think price could go for Chainlink long-term. So let's start with what is an Oracle in the context of blockchain and smart contracts. What it does is it takes data from the real world and translates that into something that's readable so that it can be used on chain to execute smart contracts. A smart contract is a self-executing contract with the terms of the agreement directly written in the code. While they're excellent for managing data and executing predefined instructions, it's limited to the information that's available. So without the Oracle, it can't access real world data. And that's where Chainlink comes in. So an Oracle acts as a data feed that brings in information from the outside sources. This was really important in 2020 when they started DeFi protocols uh, and there was a big rage then. That's decentralized finance for people that are watching this for the first time or may not know. Chainlink helped these DeFi protocols use real world things like stock prices, property values, and even gold prices. And it offered like 718 different types of data. And this helped the DeFi protocols take that information in and then use it to allow borrowing and lending against, you know, tokenized gold or, or some of the other things that people were working on at the time. Chainlink, again, like I said, I think it's going to be here a long time and it's grown beyond just providing data. It's really starting to take on a role as the mainstay for enterprise adoption for Oracle and for blockchain smart contracts in that application. Uh, so Chainlink offers six general types of Oracle services to hybrid smart contracts, including delivering external data, like we talked about, uh, replying to the smart contracts and outputs back to the external system, uh, performing off-chain computations, enabling the blockchain interoperability. So like if you had one blockchain that needed to put data on another one, um, I think there's some stuff right now between Polkadot and uh, Cosmos where this application is being used. It allows people to verify the identification of the other party uh, in a private manner and provides a blockchain abstraction layer. So enterprises can use Chainlink to sell data and services to these smart contracts, operate a backend Oracle infrastructure, and build their own hybrid smart contracts for new and transformative business models. The Chainlink's functionality allows for enterprises to connect their own backends to public or permission blockchains that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. So we talked about DeFi. Chainlink is widely used across a variety of decentralized applications and enterprise solutions, including the data feed like we talked about that's applicable for uh, money markets, insurance, gaming, and other major industries. Some examples of these integrations that people are already working with would be Singularity DAO, Munich Protocol, APX Finance, Landshare, and then there's lots of other ones. These projects span various applications such as AI-powered quant strategies, cross-margin money markets, uh, decentralized perpetual aggregators, automated vaults, and decentralized exchanges, and even real estate for those applications. Basically, Chainlink is going to be one of the mainstays that allows for real adoption of this technology in enterprise solutions. You have to have an Oracle they can take the real world data for the real world asset, the RWA, and then bring that on chain. Outside of IOTA, I think for private markets and enterprise solutions, Chainlink is it. Looking at what Chainlink offers for its token in the future, I see three main things. One, payments based on how much you're using it. Two, is the sharing of fees. And then three, they have a special program that rewards people uh, to help provide Chainlink services. Uh, these points show that Chainlink has a strong future and could be extremely valuable in the future depending on how much volume moves over the network in these different uses for the token. I know people are always concerned about who owns the token and how much of it. 35% of the token was sold publicly and another 35% was given to those that help run the network. And then 30% was kept for the founders and the team. And there's really no way to tell who owns how much within that group. I like a third, third, third like that. Honestly, I would like a little bit less for the founders and the team. Um, most of the time I like to keep that to like 20% less. Um, and they didn't have an ICO. I think that this will be one of the mainstays in the future so let's get into price. What could you see for Chainlink beyond this year, 2024 into 2025, uh, all the way out to 2030 as we get, you know, full scale adoption of blockchain smart contracts, Web3, and all the applications that we discussed previously? As you can imagine, it could be pretty substantial. We saw it run up to like $35 a piece. 
uh, back in 2021. Obviously, it's down from then uh, with FTX and everything else that's transpired. We still have people building on the networks and utilizing, you know, the Oracle to be able to bring data on chain. So as banks, uh, especially traditional finance, uh, Swift, you know, we heard about a partnership with them. And again, they're just pulling data on chain. They're not using it for the settlement component of it, uh, which would be a lot more volume. Um, and there's some other players that, you know, I have positions in that I think will do really well with that. But, but Chainlink is integral for that, the interoperability between chains and then also uh, communicating that data between the real world and these centralized applications or smart contracts. So if I had to speculate, you know, uh, conservatively, I think you could, you could probably see three digits at some point. A little hesitant to say four digits, but low to mid three digits, I think is completely reasonable over the next five to 10 years for Chainlink. Then like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.